Hello friends, James Stevenson. Let's talk about what everyone in the Tesla community is talking about right now since uh, late yesterday afternoon. And that is the Tesla board has proposed a three for one stock split for Tesla stock. So I'll give you the really quick news in case you don't have time to watch this whole video, which is uh, back in August, of 2020, Tesla did a five for one stock split and they've announced another one uh, will be voted on uh, on August 4th at the next annual shareholders meeting, this time a three for one stock split. All right. So what I thought about doing here was a YouTube live stream where I would take your questions about the stock split and answer them. But then I realized I don't have that many YouTube followers. I have a lot more Twitter followers. And I tweeted about this stock split last night and got lots of questions. So I'm just going to go through that tweet and the replies that I got to it. And then we can talk about. Um, well, let me share my screen here. This is going to feel like a live stream because all of my videos feel like a live stream because I do them all in one take. That's right. Each James Stevenson video is a one take masterpiece in the making. All right, uh, so this is that tweet that I was talking about. Allow me to be amongst the last to tell you, because I didn't get this out until 10.30 p.m. Eastern last night, that Tesla has filed a proxy statement today. Proxy statement just means, hey, what's gonna happen at the annual shareholders meeting? announcing that the board has proposed a three for one Tesla stock split. There's a bunch of stuff for uh, the investors to vote on, uh, but this is item number four, or they call it proposal four on the ballot. It's like voting, like for politics, except for people who own the company. Uh, I don't foresee any reason this proposal won't be approved. The board is in favor of it. Uh, Presumably, Elon is in favor of it. He owns more than 20% of the stock. So uh, usually, if the board recommends it and Elon votes for it, it gets approved. I highlighted the most important parts of proposal four below. So I'm going to make this big so you can uh, read it as well as I can. Now, I, uh, I took to heart the feedback I received in my previous video about my 4K display. And I made the sacrifice of changing my display resolution on this 4K TV to be only 1080p so that it'll be the same resolution uh, when I upload it to YouTube in 1080p as you see it here. Okay. Uh, the legalese on these is always uh, thick and hard to get through and doesn't sound like normal people talk. And the reason for that is the history of this stuff. Uh, the people who file these things um, just borrow the language that has been used already in previous filings and they copy and paste it in. And that's been happening for about a hundred years. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Uh, nobody wants to have to explain to the SEC why they changed up all the wording on it and what that signifies. So instead they just take the easier route of a hey, uh, this is the language that companies have been using to declare votes for uh, stock splits. So we'll just recycle it and use it again. So I'm going to read to you the parts that I have highlighted, which are all you need to know to understand what's happening here. Uh, proposal four to increase shares of common stock by 4 billion shares from 2 billion shares to 6 billion shares. What are we talking about so far? This is just saying the people who own the company, the shareholders get to set a maximum limit on how many shares of stock the company's management, you know, the CEO and the CFO are allowed to sell. Uh, and that limit has been 2 billion shares. There's currently like a little around 1.1 billion shares outstanding right now. Uh, they're talking about raising that to 6 billion shares, okay, uh, as part of this proposal to be voted on. 
The primary purpose of the authorized shares amendment is to facilitate a three for one split of our common stock in the form of a stock dividend, the stock split. Our board intends to, to approve the stock split, not improve, but approve the stock split subject to and contingent upon stockholder approval. So there's gonna be a vote on August 4th. And if the vote is yes, to increase the limit for the maximum number of shares that management can issue, then the board will approve the stock split of three for one on common stock. Now, the word dividend is in here, and this is part of what I'm talking about uh, when I talk about the old legalese in here being confusing uh, to people who uh, don't know what's going on. So when you think about a company that pays a dividend, what you're thinking about is a cash dividend. This is not a cash dividend. This is a stock dividend. Now, no, nobody talks about what a stock dividend is, but they're just saying that the way, that the mechanism through which Tesla will affect the stock split is in the form of a stock dividend. What does that mean? It means they're giving everybody two shares who owns one share. So for, for every share you own, they're gonna give you two more. That is a three for one stock split because everybody will have three shares post-split for every one share they had pre-split. I hope I said that right. Uh, so that's the easiest way to think about what a, a three for one stock split is. Now, uh, <laughs> But now, if uh, if your if your grandmother gave you three uh, gave you two shares of Tesla stock uh, for every one share of stock that you own, then you would have three times as much value of money uh, invested in Tesla stock at that after taking receipt of that. That is not what's going on here. When the company gives all of the the stockholders two shares for every one they have. Nobody owns more of the company than they did before. That makes sense. So if if everyone who owns stock gets two shares for every one they own, then there's just more shares and everyone still owns the same fraction of the company they did before the split. So why would a company do a stock split in the first place? Why do companies issue stock splits? It's so that the share price doesn't keep running away higher and higher and becoming more and more unaffordable for people. Now, nowadays you can buy fractional shares. So um, the, the example to give here is Berkshire Hathaway. If you wanna buy one share of Berkshire Hathaway, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't follow that price, so I couldn't tell you exactly what it is today, but it's a lot of money because since 1960, that company has been getting more and more profitable, earning more and more money. And that makes the share price go up unless something happens uh, to prevent the share price from going up. It's gonna go up when the company keeps getting more and more profitable over time because more and more investors want to own a piece of that company that keeps growing earnings. So the companies that produce the most earnings are the companies that are the most valuable. That is, they, ha they have the highest market capitalizations. Their stock is worth more than companies that don't make as much money in the long run and in general. And there's all, all sorts of caveats that go with that. But those are, those are generally the rules. People buy stocks because they want to own uh, companies that are growing their earnings and becoming more profitable in the future than they are today. All right, I've probably talked about this page enough, so I'm going to go to the questions that are in the comments now, and we'll go through them one by one. So, uh, so I assume macro, which Tesla doesn't control, is responsible for us not getting our 10 for one or even like the other guys in the peer group are 20 for one split. So there are some other companies that have done a 20 for one split or a 10 for one split. Well, I, I haven't really answered the question that I said I was going to answer earlier. Why do companies do stock splits? It's to telegraph to the investors that the company is successful and achieving its goals and uh, financially strong. 
and has a positive outlook, right? So when you hear that a company is announcing a stock split, that means the board has confidence in that company's strategy and that it has been working and that they expect it to continue to work. You wouldn't want to issue a stock split and then have your company's share value fall a lot from there. Um, and that would, you'd look pretty dumb as a board of directors if that happened, if um, you were announcing a stock split, but the company was, was in poor uh, financial health. You also don't wanna do too big of a split and get the dollar amount of your stock price too low. There's some stocks out there that are trading at like $9 well, they can't even do a stock split because if they did, they would get delisted by the exchanges that they trade on for having their share price below $5 or whatever, right? So uh, you don't want to do, you don't want to do a 1000 for one stock split because you would get delisted um, if you had a, a share price below $1,000 or below $5,000, right? Answering questions on the fly. All right. Uh, confirms Elon's negative view on immediate future. I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I don't um, agree with that viewpoint. It's just a number, right? A stock split is just, hey, let's pick a ratio uh, and announce a stock split. If you want to be able to do a stock split every year, you don't want to start with a big number uh, because it limits your ability to be able to do stock splits in the future, right? Um, and uh, management may have a number that they feel like is a good trading range for the stock to be in, you know, for a long time, 2014 to 2019, late, late 19, Tesla was trading in this range between you know, $150 and $370, someplace in that range-ish. Um, so maybe this is just the board trying to knock the price back down into that range again so that it can grow from there. Um, I don't think it means there's a negative view in the future. I have a very positive view, if it's worth anything, on Tesla's short-term earnings growth potential. I think they've got triple-digit earnings growth on deck for the next four quarters. All right, shareholders must disagree for three for one, propose five for one at least. So there's this idea that if you vote against the stock split that you can get whatever ratio you want. Well, it, it doesn't matter what the ratio is. And if you listen to people like Dave Lee or uh, Rob Maurer, um, they, they'll, they'll take a, a fun, lighthearted view of guessing what the stock split ratio will be because it doesn't matter. Everybody still owns the same percentage of the company that they owned before. And it, it shouldn't be a stock catalyst for everybody to still have the same ownership percentage of the company they had before the split. Um, but it does promote excitement and uh, increase confidence in general, you know, broadly speaking, when companies do stock splits, that that indicates to the market that they have an optimistic view forward. Uh, so, yeah, you, you can't vote against increasing the share limit and get a bigger stock split ratio because the, the board is constrained by that limit. If the limit doesn't get raised, they can't do any stock split. I hope that makes sense. All right. Uh, why only three? The board didn't tell us. Um, they just are proposing a three for one. Maybe they have a targeted range for where they would like that post split price to land. And that's speculation on my part, of course. Thank you for sharing. Last but not least, what about Larry leaving the board? Okay, so Larry Ellison was the founder of Oracle, a very big, very successful California corporation. They make software, they're very good at it. He kept ownership of a large portion of it and became a multi, multi-billionaire off of that. He owns the second most amount of Tesla stock behind Elon Musk and has been a board member for, 
I don't know, three or four years. Uh, he's retired from Oracle. He's kind of a, uh, a CEO emeritus at this point, I guess, and spends most of his time in Hawaii. Uh, he has purchased lots of property with his wealth in, in uh, the Hawaiian island of Lanai. And he, he, he is retirement age. Larry is 77. So uh, him stepping down off the board is not a huge surprise. I did see a suggestion that uh, he's been reading Elon's tweets about how um, if you don't want to work from home, we'll consider that you've resigned. And if you're Larry Ellison and you own half of Lanai, maybe you just want to work from home, right? Uh, rather than having to attend the board of directors functions a couple of times a year. Hey, Elon, if you're looking for a board member, I, I can free up some time to, to make that commitment work. All right, uh, if there's a, a vacancy. Is it a five for one split when 1 billion shares increased by 4 billion to 5 billion? Well, just to, to be clear, it's raising from 2 billion by 4 billion to 6 billion. Um, you can rewind the video and check out that part of the disclosure to get, get your facts lined up. It's not a five for one split. There would be room to do more than a three for one split within that cap. Uh, if you're raising it all the way to six billion, you could squeeze a five for one in there too uh, for, from the 1.1 billion ish that's outstanding today. You could multiply that by five and still get in under a six billion cap. But uh, no, it's what the board proposes. <laughs> the proposal says the board proposed a three for one stock split and intends to implement that. Once the share limit authorization is approved, you want enough padding in the authorized shares limit to not have to keep voting to raise it constantly. So you don't want uh, there to be votes every year to raise the share count, right? You'd like to set it high enough that you can keep issuing employee stock compensation, which every employee of Tesla is eligible to receive uh, if they elect to do that as part of their compensation. Um, there isn't a CEO stock compensation plan uh, with, uh, with milestones that Elon is working towards currently. He has achieved all the goals under his 2018 CEO performance award plan. There were 12 tranches max uh, allowable and he achieved all 12 already. So Elon is currently working for free. He takes no salary. Now, before you feel too uh, bad for him, he's become the wealthiest person in the world off the value of the stock options that he has earned by growing Tesla's revenue and earnings and market capitalization massively under that plan. Um, but Tesla's owners, uh, the rest of the people who own the company along with Elon, have uh, benefited from that same uh, wealth uh, growth over that same time period. So it was worth it to the shareholders to give him that compensation plan. I'm surprised they wouldn't vote for more to allow another split in the future. Six billion shares seems strange because it's far more than they need for the three for one. Worries me they'll do another capital raise. I am not worried that Tesla will do another capital raise. Tesla has about $20 billion worth of cash on hand. That is more than sufficient to fund their current capital growth plan and to run the operation of the business. Um, and Tesla has been using that cash balance to pay down their um, recourse capital, so te or recourse debt. So Tesla has almost no recourse debt left on the balance sheet. They've paid it all down. There is some debt left in the books and it's almost 100% solar uh, installation debt. So this is uh, installment plans for people who bought solar uh, or other Tesla energy products. So uh, that's non-recourse debt. So there's no, um, th there's nothing at risk to Tesla if that debt goes bad. Uh, other than the, uh, the foregone payments on the debt. All right, they're, they're not gonna lose any factories over it is the point. Um, more likely for next round of Elon compensation negotiations and employee stock, yes. I'm glad it wasn't bigger, looking forward to another in three to five years. 
you, you may not have to wait three or five years to get another. They have room to do another one whenever they want. Uh, could do one every year. Uh, who, who knows what the board would like to do. What's with Larry leaving the board? I addressed that one. Oh, well, coming from you is legit. Do we know when this vote is set to happen? And I replied August 4th with a link here. I will leave this link in the YouTube video description as well so you can follow this. What happens if you follow this link? Um, let me open this in. Uh, well, let me just drag this up to the screen here. Can I get this to move to my other display? Man, it really doesn't want to move. All right, I'm, I'm having uh, technical difficulties with my browser. It refuses to move off of my other display. So I'll leave that link in the description and you can go uh, peruse that at your leisure. Uh, August 4th is the date of the annual shareholders meeting. So uh, the, the in-person attendance is very limited for that event, but it'll be webcast live, which is arguably a superior experience to attending in person once you take into account, you know, the, the hassles of getting in and out of the venue, that sort of thing. Uh, what if shareholders vote to not approve this three for one stock split? What if majority want a larger five, 10 or 20 for one stock split? If they vote against the proposal, then they definitely won't get any split at all uh, because they will not have raised the limit enough for the board to be able to do any stock split at all. Uh, so for every one share you own, you'll get two. Yes, that is how it works. Uh, does it matter if you own stock after the record date of 6-6? Six, six? No, it doesn't. So long as you own shares before the stock split date happens, you will get the uh, shares. So the uh, example I'll use is from August 31st of 2020. That was the date that Tesla's five for one stock split went into effect. Anybody who owned shares of Tesla that morning when the stock market opened, got uh, four more shares to go with each share they owned, making a total of five for one, right? It's a five for one stock split. So you, you will have post-split five shares for every one you owned pre-split. Uh, here's Gustavo Latovsky, a Gus Knox, longtime uh, Tesla Q, Generalissimo, longtime Tesla hater, believes the stock price is going to zero uh, or somewhere close enough to zero that it doesn't matter. Uh, Gustavo says you should pay more attention to the fact Allison is leaving the board of directors instead of a useless split. Uh, you got to love Gustavo. Uh, so he, he, he thinks it's a really big deal that Allison is leaving the board of directors. Uh, the second largest shareholder of Tesla um, leaving the board is cause enough for concern in Gustavo's mind that there's, there's something wrong. Longview Trading has added that Allison is busy working on his island, that island being the island of Lanai in Hawaii aforementioned. Uh, he is, he's a risk staying on the board. I don't know why he's a risk if he stays on the board. He, he, let, let the man do what he wants. Uh, he's, he's 77. He's earned the right to be on the board or not on the board if that's what he chooses to do. All right. Uh, most interesting is CFO and accounting, selling stock, and on and on. Elon called the top in December and in April. So there, there's another opinion for you. Uh, retweeting a Tesla Q insider selling options. So uh, famously, J.B. Straubel, uh, who co-founded Tesla with Elon, uh, was selling stock at the lows in 2019, and uh, the short sellers, Tesla Q, were convinced that that was an indication that Tesla was going to zero right away, and they couldn't have been more wrong. Those are the lowest prices that you could have sold Tesla stock at uh, over the past five years, and these uh, company employees have to enter into um, 10B51 plans, which are, um, I hope I got that right, which are legal agreements 
where they as insiders who have information that has not been released to the public have to set up a schedule in advance of when they're going to sell, how many shares, like months and months in advance, so that um, they can't um, time the market or uh, engage in insider trading, right? Uh, so that's that's the, the rules that the SEC has set up to allow insiders to still be able to sell some stock sometimes. And you either have to stick with that plan that you set up, you know, months or years earlier, or you have to cancel the plan. Those are kind of your only options. So um, sometimes people want to sell stock. I mean, who knows? The, the, the number of reasons why people might want to sell stock is as long as the list of things you can buy with money. Right. Uh, so let's let, let's not uh, put too much weight on insider selling of tiny amounts of stock or or any amount of stock, really. Should create a mobile app globally for Tesla notifications, call it the Stevenson Alerting System, SAS. Uh, I thought that was already called Follow Sawyer Merit. <laughs> so you will get a lot of Tesla news if you follow Sawyer Merit. And Athena says, here's your Friday night prize. Okay. And that's it. All right. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. I will hit the stop button on my second screen. And I will say, if you have enjoyed this video, click the like button, you know, or not. It's your life. Do what you want. And uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, why not subscribe to my channel? That would be a good thing to do. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, or if not, you know, there's lots of other stuff for you to watch on, on YouTube. And I uh, will see you in the next one.